what a game, what a result, what a squad, what a manager, what a fan base. Just fucking yes, man. I really don't really know where to start with this one because I've just, I've just so much just bubbling. So I'm just going to let it flow. This is probably the most dramatically won trophy in Klopp's time. It's Liverpool 2.0's first trophy. Van Dijk's first trophy as captain. I love this team so much. And I'll talk about all the key points of the match as well. But as the match was going on, I was like, I was like the Bradley booking, the Casado, no foul, no card, nothing. The bullshit offside. This is either going to sting so bad <laughs> or it's going to be the most glorious victory of all time. Ah, It was just another mad final. The momentum was shifting back and forth throughout the 90 minutes. Chelsea were on top. Liverpool were on top. They had a goal chalked off. We had a perfectly legitimate goal chalked off. You know, we were hitting hitting the post. We were like goal mouth scrambles. Yeah, and another! Yeah, and another! Yeah, and another! It was it was up and down. This was this was a novel of a match. Chelsea bringing on hundreds of millions worth from their squad. Us bringing on kids. I never, I never heard of Jaden Dans until last week. Second match, he's already got a trophy. Extra time comes around and they are shattered. Our kids come on and they don't just boot it away or just be a body. Like they actually play and take it to Chelsea. The fans, oh and if you were there, you son of a bitch. The fans kind of got got a whiff, got a whiff in the air that something might be brewing here. The loudest, like it was Anfield. Allay, allay, allay. Ringing through the London town, you slags. Well, I think the energy you see from the Liverpool supporters now is in recognition of those young boys who are on the pitch and have started this extra time ever so well. And you know what? I'll admit, when it was going to penalties, or when it looked like it might be going to penalties, I was like, you know what? Just to even get it to penalties here, it's a testament to the lads. And whatever happens in penos, whatever. But to win it like that, and for it to be Van Dijk who had the goal ruled out earlier, I lost it. It was it was one of the it was one of the few times I was watching it by myself in the next room because I had to because my energy was not family friendly. <laughs> when Van Dijk's goal went in, I mean, it's one of the few times that I gave a guttural. Like that. And my curtains were open. Like people would just look in and be like, she's fucking yeah man. Chill out. Where I was just like Aah! So special. And you know what? Like it's not it's not just like okay, fair enough, we had to because our team was riddled with injuries. But also I don't know if every manager puts three on in one, you know what I mean? Takes off three legitimate penalty takers in Gakpo, McAllister and Robertson. Now, granted, Simakas, who came on, can take a penalty as well. We all know that. You know, he brought them on. Obviously gave them guidance, gave them instructions to play. And not just... Like, imagine your second competitive game. And you're playing <laughs> in extra time in Wembley Stadium. The faith that Klopp showed in the youngsters, they repaid it back. The respect that he had for the team, because... We'll get to the Van Dyke goal, but Nunez and Sobosla's celebrations look like they're pretty close to full fitness to me. <laughs> so, you know, I think other managers might have thought, ugh, I can't, I can't, I can't start a final with a bench like that. You know, at least he might have Salah, Nunez or something on the bench, and a break glass in case of emergency sub. They weren't even in the squad. That's how much faith he has in the squad as a whole. Okay, so a few talking points of the match. Let's start, let's start at the top or the bottom. Quivine Kelleher, my hero. My best friend. He, wa he was perfect. 10 out of 10. That first save against Cole Palmer, that was like Judek and Shevchenko. Oh, uh, shit! Did you see that? And, who we'll get to later, the follow-up clearance from Endo, just as important. Then the Conor Gallagher save towards the end of full time. I mean, the timing again. And by the way, a lot of credit should go to John Ochterberg here. Am I saying that right? Ochterberg? The goalkeeping coach. Because he, these keepers 
Alison and Kelleher just have this the read of like when to go when the when the attacker makes his like first touch they just come rushing at you like Gallagher was like okay I'm just gonna set myself and I'm the hero Gallagher he's in on goal and Quivin Kelleher again fucking legend Quivin Kelleher he's already a Liverpool legend and he's my best friend <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to DM him today and tell him you're a fucking legend, mate. Think about it. Like, I think of so many sliding doors moments in this match. Like, he like he literally saved us. None of none of what happened after would have been possible if he hadn't have pulled out some heroic stops. You know what I mean? Like, one of them goes in. You'd never say, "Oh, keeper should be saving that." Keeper should not be saving these. <laughs> so the fact that he kept us in it. For two hours, he kept that goal clean as a whistle. Also, I hate to be petty, but Casado's shy. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Do you know what as well? I know you shouldn't judge a book by his cover, but he looks like a prick as well. Just saying. He's obviously bitter about the fact that he made a terrible decision while his agent is... <laughs> he obviously thought, I know. If I injure enough players in their midfield, they'll have to take me back. That foul on grabbing Birch. You know what I mean? Curtis Jones, red card. Casado, no foul. No booking. You know what I mean? McAllister, one foul, one booking. Casado, 72,000 fouls. So, as we all know, the Casado transfer didn't happen in the end, but a transfer that did happen. And again, another sliding doors moment. Imagine if we got Casado for 115 million or whatever the fuck. We'd never even know. We wouldn't even know about Wataro Endo. I can't tell you how much I love Wataro <laughs> Endo. He wins. You look emotional, mate. I'm with you. I'm with you. Go on. Let it out. He wins that ball so much. Like for most of the 90 minutes, the only time I wasn't nervous was, that, was when Endo had the ball. Or Van Dijk. Whenever Endo had the ball, I was like... It was like a little breather from my own anxiety of the match. Like, ah, and then he'd pass it to someone else. A perfectly, perfectly legitimate player. But I'd be like, oh, come on, come on. And Endo would have the ball again. I'd be like, oh, okay. It's all going to be okay. I fucking love the man. Ran his ass off for two hours. Even when Van Dijk eventually scored. And by the way, we're getting to that. He could say, see even the way he's running to celebrate. He's like, ow, ow, ow. Also, by the way, I'm calling this the League Cup, by the way. I'm, I'm not calling it the Carabao Cup. Liverpool are the League Cup winners. I don't care for this sponsored shit. The Carabao Cup winners. It's, it's better than the previous versions. Imagine if it was still called, like, the Worthington Cup. Some snot-nosed punk of a cup. The Coca-Cola Cup. No. The League Cup, thank you very much. Record 10th time, thank you very much. Anyway, on to Van Dyke. I mean, first of all, let's talk about Van Dyke's perfectly legitimate goal disallowed. Oh, that fucking VAR did me. You know what I mean? Normally, when a Liverpool score a goal, I'm like silently, like, can I celebrate? Whereas this one, I was like perfectly legitimate. Nothing wrong with it. I couldn't see for even like I was jumping around and like fucking yeah. Such a sweet header as well. And by the way, I'm ranking that one on the fucking yes scale as well because it's a perfectly legitimate goal. A fucking yes scale. Nine. And so, even even when that went in and I'm jumping around the room like, yes. They're like, and they will check this for offside. I was like, fucking check it then. I mean, this was the most like, get your spy glasses out and try and see. I mean, we might be able to give it for that. <laughs> Scousers won't be happy. <laughs> so what Endo? So what Endo did is not okay this week, then, is it not? Great. It's you know what? It's it's good to know. And um, you know, I didn't know that before. I thought it was allowed because um, you know you see it every single week. But um, that's fine. I look forward to being. I look forward to it being implemented um, going forward as the weeks go on. That's the precedent now. So I can absolutely, definitely, can't wait to see it be implemented by every referee going forward and not just down to personal preference. The people in the VAR studio were like, 
mate, you're not going to believe it, but you've had an absolute howler here. And the crime? <sighs> Standing still. Did he, like, run a bit and, like, no, no. Just stood still. <clears throat> yeah, but he impeded Colwell, um, who, you know, would have got there, we think. Was he even marking him? Because he didn't seem to give a shit about being stopped. He's like, ah, oh, good, I've got my man, Endo, the man who I'm marking. And all game, I was thinking, as, as the time went on, like, when it got to full time, I was like, fucking hell. When do you ever, as a Liverpool fan, be counting the minutes to full time? Like, just waiting for the whistle to go when it's nil-nil, instead of what we're all used to and the team pushing on to every last second. Like, it was such a different performance. And all the time, I'm like, that goal was perfectly legitimate. And then, it happened. Yes, 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 yes! Let's... <sighs> I mean, I lost it. Let's break this down with a patented fucking yes scale. The fact that it was him. The fact that he had a perfectly good one disallowed. He's like, I'll just fucking do it again. The fact that it was the last two minutes, and yet again, the man does not break stride in the run-up, the head, and the celebration. He keeps the same pace. Oh, you know what it's going to be. It's a fucking yes. Ten. And as if it wasn't, as if it wasn't already a ten. Look, I can't give everything eleven. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to give it like a 15, but then the score, then the scale is meaningless. But I'll tell you what nearly pushed it to 11. It was Darwin Nunez's celebration. I mean, he's pretty close to full fitness, I'd say. <laughs> Look at this, like, what a madman. What a madman. Ah. But yeah, Van Dijk, he is an absolute treasure. Like, when I look at Liverpool in the last 10 years and the key figures in their success... Klopp is number one. Van Dijk, number two. Like, you could argue Salah, number two, but that's like Van Dijk's third or fourth man of the match performance um, in his seventh final in Liverpool or something like that. I mean, he was incredible. Like, what a, like, just what a defender. What a leader. Like, you look at, <laughs> you look at this weekend alone, and, uh, you know, I don't want to get petty here, but you look at Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> That's Man United's captain, you know. And this is Manchester United Football Club we're talking about, yeah? Been the biggest cheat and prick in Premier League history, right? Then you got Chilwell. What a fucking... I mean, just look at him as well. Again, I shouldn't judge books by their cover. I shouldn't just get as petty as, like, look at him. But look at him. You are a big posh sod with plums in your mouth. Imagine he's your captain. And then we've got Virgil van Dijk as our captain. I mean, just exemplary. And you can see what it meant to him as well, van Dijk. Just the emotions were flowing. His first trophy as captain. I mean, it, this could be our last trophy under Klopp. We really hope it isn't. But they were celebrating like, it, like they knew it could be. You know what I mean? Obviously, we have nothing but belief and this squad, and it's a it's a special it's a special squad of players. But like, it's you know, shit happens, and trophies are hard to win. <laughs> so you could see how much Klopp, Van Dijk, everyone was just soaking everything in. Um, oh, just fucking yes, man! And then at the end, just the song, the tears, the emotion. It was like being at Anfield. Ah, and the whole time, like yeah, you go so back and forth, like ah, it's just the Carabao Cup. It's not just the cup, though. It's about what we overcame. And yes, I'm saying we. By the way, some people have an issue with that in the comments. To win it with this team that we had, just I tell you, it was a victory for football. That's what it was. My daughter said when I came in from the, the other room, she was like, "It sounded like there was someone <laughs> breaking into the house." And then I, and then when the match was over, I had to go to Aldi. And I'm just standing there at the checkout, just being like, it's like, it's weird to have such an outpouring of emotion and then to 
be around normal society like 30 minutes later just be like ah <laughs> anyway i've loads to do today i have to edit this one quick so i'm sorry that i can't put in a lot of clips again but um man what a fucking feeling and is there anything better than the days following a final where on social media where you're just drip fed all these little moments that you might have missed or little highlights or montages and bits from the club and oh i'm gonna enjoy the next few days and i hope you will too um somehow we will have to have a team ready for wednesday thank fuck it's not a league match that's all i'll say i mean what a win i was going around my house all last night just just randomly just going fucking yes like I'll be talking, I'll be talking to my uh, girlfriend about something, or like you know they didn't have the original naan, they only had the garlic naan bread, and blah blah blah. Fucking yes, Kerry. <laughs> like it just came bubbling out every conversation. I was like, yeah no, yeah no worries, I'll 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 make uh, I'll make her lunch now, so she'll have it ready in the morning. Fucking yes as well, Kerry. To be like, on paper you would say, would you rather win one nil an extra time, and go through all that, or would you rather win four nil? And, like, you'd say 4-0 because you're like, oh, we blew them away. But you just wouldn't have this feeling, the feeling of a last-minute goal that just stays with you. One of many already this year, by the way. I mean, this is one of my favourite Liverpool teams that we've had, is this group, because it just shouldn't be working this good this quick. But it is. And we just keep winning. Even with, like, I mean, all of our squad is basically out. Barring a few. I'm sorry if I missed out on anything. I just poured out today. And by the way, thank you so much for the support. I got a lot of new views from... I noticed a lot of views coming from Reddit. And I seen there's a bit of uh, people putting up the videos up there. So thank you very much. Thanks everyone, by the way, for the suggestions on the fucking yes scale t-shirt. Um, I literally got about 100 comments specifically about that. So um, I think I know what I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to be going around. I'm just going to be going around today just... Randomly, just been a morning. Thank you so much for the support. Please give us an L sub if you are feeling kind. And up the fucking reds. I'll see you during the week.